थकान का एक ही उपाय है एक कप कड़क चाय उबलते पानी में थोड़ा सा जिंजर चाय की पत्ती चीनी कड़क चाय के लिए मैं रिकमेंड करता हूँ ताजे दूध से बना रेनबो इवेपरेटेड मिल्क इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डालते हैं जैसे ही बढ़िया रंग आए गैस बंद कर दीजिए रेनबो इवेपरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच रेनबो टॉप गॉन सीजन टू Hello and welcome to Top Guns. I'm your host, Shane Phillips. Every week we feature a successful Indian personality in the UAE. The idea is we learn from these success stories. They inspire us. They give us a blueprint for moving forward. Today's story takes us back 70 years. India had just gained its independence and entrepreneurs were springing up left and right. The Dodsal Group as we know it was formed in 1948. Let's speak to the chairman, Rachin Kalachan, to hear the Dodsal story and why he moved his headquarters to Dubai. Presented by Nokia, powered by Audi. My dad's a larger than life uh, man, so it's you can hear him laugh from a mile away. Um, there was an Italian friend of ours over the other day, and it was the first time he met my father, and he said in his Italian accent, "Your father is like a volcano." One thing that will always stick is enjoy yourself. He's twice my age, but he has, I think, ten times more fun than people my age. You know, whether it's music or traveling, wine. You know, and this is one thing that I've learned from him. Just enjoy the moment. He works hard, but he plays hard, and it's it's great. Rajan Kalachan, welcome to Top Guns. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. You're really one of the iconic business leaders within South Asia and the Middle East. It's uh, really amazing to hear your story, and all of us are wondering how you first began to make your mark on the Kalachin dynasty. Well, um, I think we should. It's a very long story, but let me start somewhere around 58, 59, because that's when uh, my late father and his brothers uh, separated out from the rest of the larger family. And uh, in that process, inherited a company called Dotsal, which was at that time nothing more than a company sponsoring international, especially Europe and German, English and Japanese and American companies for the sale of their product and services in post-independence India. Sure, similar to how they sponsor companies in the UAE. That is right. That is right, and similar to most of the. Um, Uh, most parts of the world were uh, after the um, uh, Second World War when the uh, colonies of Great Britain got independence. That was the easiest business to get into. Uh, so yes, similar to what you were saying. And um, there were four of them, and they basically used that as a um, nodal point to go into engineering construction, plus a host of other businesses, which included. Uh, The second five-star hotel in Goa, after Taj, the largest travel agency in India, Trade Wings, plants for uh, factories for manufacturing mica capacitors for the electronic industry for export in Kandla, and so on and so forth. Like any entrepreneurial family with joint family business with four entrepreneurs, uh, free willing. And a lot of those were firsts. I mean, you you. In a sense, first. yes, yes. Um, As fate had it, um, they had a very short career because they uh, passed away at a young age, and by 1982, almost in 12 years, uh, most all of them had passed away, and uh, leaving behind basically uh, s- s- six sisters, uh, seven sisters, and myself. 
And as was the custom in those days, um, though we owned it equally, the male always was put in charge of the businesses. So I found myself in a hot seat. I was all of 31. Uh, I had just got married in 74 when I came back from the States. Um, and uh, honestly, um, uh, you know, I had never been uh, really uh, in most parts of India except as a, a, a young boy in classroom uh, going on uh, school tours in third class compartment seeing India. But I didn't know the corridors of power in Delhi. I didn't even know about Delhi. And most of my business, our businesses were with governments. So uh, you have to know your customer. So that, became, that began a journey which is still never ending. And um, over 15 years from, or say 12, 13 years from 82 to 1995, basically a couple of things ha uh, happened uh, in my business career. And uh, A, um, I um, uh, disposed of or shut down almost all the businesses other than the engineering and construction business, which I expanded into not only uh, into other areas of engineering and construction, mm -hmm. or and about what we were originally doing, which was basically uh, steel plants, power stations, and pipelines. So you came and into this at uh, 31, 32? Yeah, 31. And then 31. this is a period of 13 And I'm years. not an engineer, and I had no clue. Uh, but you uh, do have what? a first-class business education from Boston University. So yes. That, that was really yes. the bedrock. Yeah. No, I would say my real education uh, uh, is really in the, on the dining table of my family's uh, uh, dining table because um, I think it was one of the over and above the classroom in Sydenham College and the school that I went to, which was fantastic, the then St. Xavier's Boys Academy, uh, coupled with parallel to the real other education which I got uh, at home on the dining table because my father and his brothers were great intellectuals and they had, after the war, gone worldwide and uh, basically they brought back uh, knowledge uh, uh, which they had absorbed of cultures, foods, cuisines, art, music, customs, business practices. And all of it was debated um, every evening. So dinner was a real, uh, I think, one of the best classrooms, uh, apart from the fact that you got a fantastic uh, love for food, which as you can see, and, uh, uh, and then is. coupled with that, of course, uh, rounding off with Boston University. But what Boston did was to really first time put me into the swimming pool of life with no tube and no parents. You know, it's you sink or swim, and you're totally on your own. You become a man. So how did you know the construction, EPC contracting business was, the, was really where you wanted to focus your efforts? And I'll tell you why. It was a little bit easy because I already inherited a, uh, this particular part of the business, which was already working at, in about seven countries simultaneously, from Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, to India, to uh, uh, Iraq, uh, Kuwait, UAE, Oman, East Africa which was a hell of a spectrum across the globe. I mean, we did our first work in my late father, I was too young, in the 60s, we went overseas in 67, and we worked in Germany and UK. We built pipelines there, and as uh, contractors to German companies, but um, they did, even in winter, and we had all Indians, and uh, they, um, um, their productivity and the quality was as good or better than the best in the world. So you faced the German winters, you faced uh, divesting fa uh, groups of the family business. Um, what have been some of the biggest challenges that you faced? Uh, you know, um, you face challenges all the time, but some of which stand out. Since you're talking about accidents, uh, I think my first accident I had on a motorcycle because I was a little bit of a speed freak in those days. Later on in life, I had about three accidents uh, Two were very serious. A second one was also the motorcycle where I had a bad concussion, and then a car in Bombay at late at night. And uh, going home from the airport, um, I had damaged my hip joint and back pretty badly, so put me flat for six months in for bed. Six months. And I had already planned, and I started running a university at home because I 
was thinking. You were I had running a, lot of a university time to while you were bedridden. Yeah, I was in, like, say, this is my my bedroom, my my library. I took my I bed up, made full hospital bed in there with all the nurses and everything. I made a list of all the things I wanted to do and learn, and so I got professors from Bharti Vidya Bhavan, and late he passed away, but on European classical music, Hinduism, on uh, art, on history, on uh, uh, fantastic. We had, I mean. So you said this is a great opportunity for me to indulge in all of those books I needed to read, all of that learning that I never got a not chance. Not only to that, read. but it made me realize that I was, I had already reached a stage in life where uh, somewhere along the road I had started focusing on all the things that kept me annoyed all the time. And I really, the things that I wanted to do, which is what I was, I just told you, I was not doing at all. So you're, you're a bit of a battle axe that just kind of chops down anything, uh, you know, from getting concussions to getting bedridden. When you come no, to I, business, what, yeah, what, what's you know, been I, the... I believe in life that um, have faith and don't give up. Go for it. You know, it's when you start with an attitude that, oh, how are you going to do it? Then you have lost the battle before you start. So when you took the business from 75, uh, from 82, up to, you know, probably the, those first years, you see 95, when well, you Well, I actually got full freedom in 95. Okay. And uh, I took a voluntary decision to close down all my businesses in India. I was doing at that, those days, about four to 500 crores a year of revenue in a service business construction. And um, I closed down, and at the age of 53, left my homeland. I just walked and, out, and, that's uh, but and I paid all the debts up from my pocket to the banks and creditors and walked out. And, you know, people don't normally do that. So it's probably people who told me 40 years ago that I'm a lunatic, they must be right. <laughs> but I have no regrets. And then, of course, I came back here and I think, um, no, I'm, the last 10 years have been fabulous. Not necessarily all successful, but they've been great. And I'm, I'm think the best is yet to come. My experience going around in countries of uh, villages in Africa and or, uh, but more so in India, you find that because of hundreds of years of neglect, you find that especially in the last 50 years, people have sort of just given up. You know, they've got that defeatist attitude. They can't even believe that they are capable of building a small house at a very, very uh, competitive and small cost. Presented by Nokia, powered by Audi. Around the world, millions of people are switching to Nokia Lumia. For the best smartphone photography in low light. <laughs> for easy wireless charging. And for city lanes to explore the world around them. <laughs> Time to switch. Gone season two. Hello and welcome back to Top Guns. I'm here with Rajan Kalachand. Rajan, people say your reputation as a visionary business leader is only eclipsed by the amount of charity and community service that you do. What's driving this? I mean, I think you've done over 50 million US dollars of donations. I've been lucky enough to have the ability to do this. Uh, 50 million dollars has been actually the big ticket items just on three, four areas in the last 10 years. But I have an ongoing amount which uh, uh, which runs into at least a million, million and a half every year in various parts of the world, whether it's financing programs for AIDS or medicine or even youth federation sports in Dubai 
and village development in Tanzania, which I'm embarking upon, integrated village development, housing, etc., uh, in India. And um, I guess this will keep going on. Um, I, I just pray that I will continue to be able to do that financial-wise. But um, I'm sure my future generations, uh, some of whom are up here, will continue that. Right. In their own way. Your charity work is really non-discriminate, I mean, because you have uh, charities in India, in the Middle East, you're active in the United States, you um, really write uh, on a global scale are, are active. How do you decide? No, I'll tell you, uh, no, there is a method in the madness. Uh, I believe that the United States is one of the top countries in the world which knows how to impart higher education in almost every sphere. I'm not belittling other countries, but then my experience is with the states. So that's why I focus with education there. In terms of uh, village development, you really don't need it in the states. So I look at countries in uh, the continent of Africa and, of course, our own country in India. For example, I have a program running through an American NGO in Path, uh, called Pathfinder in Brunei with the tribes in the jungles there on AIDS. It's been going on there for the last three years. And then for sports, I do in whatever community, whichever communities where I'm involved, or my organizations are involved, you know, local communities. So it's really three, a broad spectrum of three areas, education, health, and uh, uh, community. And what's on the horizon from uh, a charity perspective? Are there any exciting causes that you're really looking to forward to getting involved with? I want to focus on two things. Uh, continue the focus on education and accelerate my focus on uh, uh, village development, integrated, not just to give a little one-off house or something, but, you know, where, especially in India and in Africa, where you have districts, like, you know, we have districts, like have a little mini hospital in a district, with local materials, local people, local capital. You know, you don't have to go to the World Bank to get a loan. But, right. and uh, involve the local people, give them a little catalyst, a little bit of funds, but use our engineering and project management expertise to help them organize it. And this can be done. It's just a question of encouraging them, mobilizing them, because my experience going around in countries of uh, villages in Africa and or, uh, but more so in India, you find that because of hundreds of years of neglect, you find that especially in the last 50 years, people have sort of just given up. You know, they've got that defeatist attitude. They can't even believe that they are capable of building a small house at a very, very uh, competitive and small cost. So, you know, these are all concepts, but the whole idea is local materials, local people, local capital, and local management. Right. Our right. job, my job is to use my expertise of my companies, my engineers, my, uh, my, my uh, uh, designers to develop this with this concept in mind. That's exciting. So expertise from London through the, tele through the technology is being uh, That's what we've catapulted yeah. this into is these villages. This going to be our next uh, uh, five-year rollout. Fantastic, fantastic. So w what really is the greatest gift of giving, or is it to you know, keep your feet on the ground by having a hand in the, uh, in the communities from which you operate? Or what's really driving uh, all of this, and what's really the big payoff for you, or what's been the biggest payoff with all of these projects? I wake up with a smile every morning. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, and I sleep with a smile every night. It must feel amazing. I mean, uh, you know, how, you know, it's really life. It's really a life or death change that you're giving for some of these villages. Um, is that uh, food for the soul, or is it really just uh, a tradition that's been? I think any human being, you know, um, irrespective of your color, caste, your political inclination, uh, at the end, when you see. Uh, other people, other human beings around you, uh, you know, uh, getting a, how do you call it, uh, glow on their faces because they can see a better life coming. I think that gives you a high which you can't describe, you know. For sure it's better than drinking a bottle of champagne, that I can tell you. <laughs> right. As you can see, Rajan Kalachin's greatest rewards come from giving back to the community. There'll be more right after this short break, so stay with us. 120 places in 120 months. I've traveled more than an airplane in my life, but haven't seen anything outside a hotel, a taxi, and an airport. 
Now I want to see everything else. Presented by Nokia, powered by Audi. Supported by the intelligent SME. Official radio partner Suno 1024 and Super 94.7 FM. Around the world, millions of people are switching to Nokia Lumia. For the best smartphone photography in low light. <laughs> for easy wireless charging. And for city lanes to explore the world around them. <laughs> Time to switch. गपशप के साथ तो एक कप चाय बनती है मसाला चाय इलायची लौंग और दालचीनी इसको कूट ले उबलते पानी में डाले इसके अंदर चाय की पत्ती और चीनी डालिए बढ़िया मसाला चाय बनाने का मेरा एक छोटा सा राज है ताजे दूध से बना रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डाल दे ये हुई ना मसालेदार बात रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच Rainbow Top Gun Season 2 Rajan, you've been on planet Earth for 61 and a half years and you claim that the first 21 were your happiest. What were some of the big learnings uh, in your childhood and you can speak to that a bit? Yeah, the first 21 years uh was the period from the time I was born till, till uh, I first ventured out of my home alone. I went to the United States to get a higher education. And you know, from that in the age of 21, I had no fear whatsoever when I just got a flight which took like uh, four days to reach Boston because it was via, via, via. And uh, with three dollars in my pocket. So that was the uh, economic situation of the country then and didn't come back for three years, more or less. Wow. So you're now at the helm of a 1.5 billion uh, organization and business group. How do you cope with that? I mean, that's a lot of pressure. There's obviously some stress that comes with that, a lot of responsibility. How do you cope with that? You know, when I was younger, I used to get tremendously stressed out. And uh, I used to probably blow my top more often than uh, I should have. Now, you know, after 30, 40 years, and working worldwide and actually transforming businesses completely from running hotels to now building nuclear power stations and doing mining in the middle of nowhere 1200 kilometers from civilization. You take on a more philosophical view because I think if you don't, you know, you would be uh, getting a heart attack faster than you should. So, <laughs> and I have no desire. What's kind of been your biggest setback uh, commercially, business-wise, and how have you bounced back from that? And I think... oh. I went uh, almost bust twice in my life. Right. Uh, and uh, on both occasions, uh, it was for reasons outside my control. In one case, um, I was caught in a combination of the Iraq war, the breakup of the USSR, and uh, the uh, World Bank pulling out of infrastructure development projects where I was involved because of environmental reasons at that time. Uh, I'm talking about the late 80s, 90s. Okay. And then the uh, second time was, of course, when um, uh, some of my closest aides, um, uh, um, let's put it mildly, uh, disagreed and uh, took me to the laundry, as they call it. Uh, but the way I look at it, perhaps I owed them money in my last life, so they took their share now. Right, you know? right. <laughs> but when you're going through these big, I mean, what you just described is you're looking at war, you're looking at some of your big uh, financial backers pulling out. Um, there's got to be some fear. Any natural person would maybe feel some fear. How do you deal with that? You know, this may sound uh, crazy, but I actually never even thought about any fear, never entered my mind. Nothing. It never entered my mind. I said, okay, well, fine. Now what's the way out? Just do it. 
Just focus on tactics and execution. Just go ahead. Execution. Live your life. Go ahead. Move forward. And what is it that you want to do? I mean, at this point now, you've accomplished so much. What, uh, what really is keeping you going and, and driving for that next mountain summit? My main, uh, over the next 10 years, I'm, uh, I've set a target of doing, and I've started about two months ago, 120 places in 120 months. I've traveled more than an airplane in my life, but haven't seen anything outside a hotel, a taxi, and an airport. Now I want to see everything else. Right, right. Go because back. I'm fond of history, museums, art, restaurants, wine, blah, 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 blah. Sounds good. Yeah. Even now you have numerous accolades uh, to list, correct? So why Dubai? Why live in Dubai? Dubai serves as a great place to be a global corporate headquarters for all your businesses and uh, because it offers a great quality of life. Is, I, there is no business that I do in Dubai. I have no business here. Mm -hmm. It is the most beautiful place in the world to live in from every aspect that I am looking for. I completely agree. I've been here four years and I completely love the city. On top of it, there's no snow, no taxes. What more could one ask for? Well, Rajan, I, I have to thank you for coming on our show. It's been absolutely fantastic. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for being on Top Guns. And if I may add, if Dubai didn't exist, mankind would have to invent it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Talking to all these Top Guns has really motivated me, and I hope it's touched you in the same way. Until next week, this is your host, Shane Phillips, signing off. It was a time in the 50s, 60s, when we lived in a joint family with at least about 70, 80 people, including a large number of staff and cousins and uh, uh, sisters and brothers and aunts and uncles and fathers and grandfathers, grandmothers, and all of them were your parents. There are always negatives to it, um, uh, but I think there is no better system to be brought up in uh, in any society than a joint family.